Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be talking about sprint length. How long should your sprint be? Let's talk about it. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if you just want to disagree with my two cents, let me know in the comment section below. Let's have a little fun with it, and now let's jump into your. Okay, so when you go into Jira and you are in your backlog view, you have the ability to create a sprint. When you create your sprint, by default, it doesn't actually have any length. You get to define your very first sprint and every subsequent sprint, Jira will tell you to determine how long you want that sprint to be. Not every sprint has to be the exact same length and you get some creative freedom to dictate the length of your sprint. But that begs the question, how long? What dates should I put in here? When I go edit my sprint and I pick my duration, do I pick one week, two weeks, three weeks, or four weeks? What is the ideal length of a sprint? So let me give you my perspective, my two cents. If you don't want to make it to the end of the video, let me just give you the spoiler. Two weeks is the default, and two weeks is what I recommend everybody to follow. I know it's a little cliche, maybe, right? And I'm not really giving you a good reason, but I'm going to give you a reason as to why the other options are not a good option. So let's talk about why one week is too small. Typically teams like one week because their environment experiences too much volatility. So the shorter they can compress their sprints, the more they feel like they can control that volatility and react. Now, the problem with one week sprints is the following. It takes an hour or so to plan out your sprint. Usually your sprint planning is happening around 10 or 11 a.m. on a Monday. And so by the time you're done, it's basically lunchtime. And then at lunchtime, your team goes to have lunch. And then by the time they come back, it's already 1, 1.30. Now you're dealing with that food coma. And so realistically, it's like three o'clock before your team's starting to get a little productive. And guess what? Quitting time's just in a couple of hours. So pretty much your Monday is a wash. You lost Monday. Fast forward to the end of the sprint on Friday, and most of your activities are spent in the review, which is about an hour to two hours long, and in the retrospective, which is another hour to two hours long. Mix in a lunch in between, and again, you pretty much have lost Friday because most people are clocking out early on Fridays anyways. So that realistically leaves you Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to complete all the work in a sprint. And I don't know about you, unless your work is tiny, unless you're scoping your stories at the smallest level of possible, and they're super simple, there's not a whole lot your team's gonna be able to finish in just three days. Because remember, you lost basically two days. So that's the one week definition. And for that reason, I don't recommend one weeks unless your team is like crushing it, right? Unless they're doing like 20 minute activities, then it makes sense. But three days is usually what a good software problem is going to take your team to figure out. That means they're going to finish one thing in that sprint. Let's talk about three and four weeks. I'm going to group these together because technically I, I like to group them together because I think they have the same effect. The fourth week obviously just amplifies what I'm about to describe by another order of magnitude. So why I don't like the three or four week sprint durations? Well, this one goes back to feedback. Now, let me tell you why teams like to use three or four weeks. They like to do three or four weeks because their process is complex. It's complicated. There's a lot of steps, a lot of interactions, a lot of dependencies, a lot of inter and intra team communication that has to happen. And so they feel that two weeks is not enough time to facilitate, to allow for all those interactions to happen. So naturally having three or four weeks to take care of your UAT, take care of your unit testing, take care of your regular testing, take care of regression testing, right? This is really for test centric organizations. They're going to want as much time as possible so that they can cross their T's, dot their I's in what is still the compounds of a sprint, not violate the sprint, but holy moly, did it take a whole month to do this, right? But the problem here is when you have a three or four week sprint, let's assume, and this is really a worst case scenario. I know it's a bit of an exaggeration, but Stay with me here for a second, right? So let's assume we start our sprint on January 1st. Then January 3rd comes around, maybe January 4th, 
And again, keep in mind, we're in a one month to three, three to four week sprint. January 3rd, January 4th comes around three to four days into the sprint and we have a bug. Our testing led to finding a, a pretty critical bug. Now, if you're following Agile to the T, then you know that you're probably, most likely, you're encouraged to hold that bug until the next sprint. Well, guess what? That next sprint ain't starting until at least February 1st. Worst case, January 21st, best case, with the three to four week, okay? And so if you found a bug on the 3rd or the 4th of January, you can't put it into your next sprint until either the 21st of January or the 1st of February, so a whole three to four weeks is gonna elapse. Then when you do plan it in, guess what? That developer that wrote that bug on January 1st or January 2nd, they forgot how to fix it. It's been so long. And so that feedback, that turnaround time is a month. And now to further amplify the problem, that developer is gonna take on that bug on February 1st, work on it. Maybe they'll finish it by February 3rd, February 4th, but it won't actually be shipped until either February 21st or March 1st, because that's when the release or when the sprint's complete, and that's when it's gonna go out. So if you had a two week sprint, so kind of let's shift over to why I love the two weeks. The two weeks is the right amount of time because that feedback, it gives you enough time for your team to actually do something productive. You have nine working days, eight real hard days of, of development, right? Because you take off the day for planning, you take off the day for, for all your reviews and your retrospectives. So out of a 10 day sprint, 10 working day sprint, you're left with eight solid days of productivity and you rinse and repeat that two weeks. So if you find a problem on January 1st, your next sprint starts on, on January 15th and you're getting something out before the end of the month, which is I think a lot more ideal than waiting basically all the way into March. And so you're solving two problems with your two week sprints. One, the bug is gonna be more fresh, more relevant in the developer because to fix the bug, they're gonna to have to have a lot of context to re-remember how to fix it. So the longer that that time elapses, the harder it is it's going to be to fix it. And second, that feedback loop, right? Because we're waiting for these sprints to finish, it's gonna take you that much longer to finally get a good release. And that's assuming that the developer fixed it right the first time because so much time elapsed, it might take him two or three tries to get this bug fixed which now we're talking about something that could have been turned around in a couple of weeks. Now we're turning something around in a few months. And for those reasons, I don't like the three or four. And for those reasons, I don't like the one week. And by kind of by process of elimination, you're left with why the two weeks is the best length for a sprint. Hopefully you found this beneficial. I know a lot of teams usually just default to the two weeks because it's what everybody preaches in the world of Agile but hopefully those give you some perspectives on why the other ones, while they are doable, you, there's nothing preventing you from doing a one, two, three, or four week sprint. Hopefully you have a little bit of a new perspective as to why I wouldn't recommend having the one, three, or four week, and why I always recommend my teams to do a two week sprint. If you found value out of this video, please make sure you smash that like button as that signal really does help the channel grow. Also, if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe as that also does help the channel grow. And finally, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or better yet, if you have any disagreements, I wanna hear about it. Let me know in the comment section below and let's have a good and healthy conversation. Also, if you haven't checked out the link for the merch store, please make sure you check out that link. It's in the description down below. And finally, I do have paid courses, so make sure you check out those paid courses. We have them on a schedule, so find a date that works for you and I'll see you in class. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.